This is the story of a small paradise that rose out of the sea over 12 million years ago. A protected, preserved paradise listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2002 for the incredible richness of its flora and fauna, a genuine nature reserve for thousands of plant and animal species. Lying in the middle of the South Atlantic, the Fernando de Noronha archipelago consists of 21 islands, of which only one, the main island, is inhabited. One day, at the age of 16, a young islander set sail on a cargo ship bound for Europe. He disembarked in the port of Dunkirk, but soon missed his archipelago. After just two years, he came home. Pedro has not left his island since. This island, Fernando de Noronha, has preserved its natural beauty. There's nothing artificial about it. That's what makes this archipelago unique. Here it's peaceful, tranquil. The difference is this. We live in a totally free and contented existence. On Fernando de Noronha, freedom means having an entire beach to yourself, such as Sancho Beach, reputed to be the most beautiful in Brazil. A beach in a primitive, primeval setting, protected by a long volcanic cliff, a refuge for thousands of birds. It feels like uncharted territory, the new world. This is more or less the view the first explorers would have had in 1503. Europe quickly became interested in the archipelago. The Dutch, English, French, and lastly the Portuguese all invaded Fernando de Noronha. These islands also aroused the curiosity of naturalists, who all spoke of their fascination for the beauty of the archipelago, like a vision of paradise on Earth. Although planes have now replaced the warships, whalers and steamers that used to supply the island, it is above all a haven for nature lovers. There are no nightclubs or luxury hotels, and visitor numbers are limited to 450 a day. Everyone has to pay a preservation tax proportional to the length of their stay. It's a natural way of ensuring no one remains too long in the archipelago. <laughs> Visitors are free to roam most of the archipelago's beaches at will but access to some is severely restricted. The idea is to protect the island's fragile ecosystem while also educating the tourists. The beach they will discover after a two-hour wait is only accessible in groups of 25 and for no more than 30 minutes. We're waiting for Atalaya Beach to open. What do you know about this beach? Nothing at all, actually, just its reputation. What we've read in magazines and what people have told us. Atalaya Beach is only open at low tide, when the sea reveals a huge natural pool protected by a barrier reef. You have to understand, this is a natural pool. 
there's nothing man-made about it. In this pool, you can find corals, sponges, algae, moray eels, ornamental fish, small fish near the coral reef. You see them in shoals. They're small. The biggest are no more than 30 centimeters. The good thing about Atalaya Beach is even if you have never dived or you don't know how to swim, you can safely observe the abundant and friendly marine life in 60 centimeters of water. of tourists are watched constantly by rangers, such as Pedro, who found employment with the archipelago's National Marine Park on his return from Europe. The good thing about this pool here on the Atalaya beach is that it's shallow. It's easy to guard. If too many people came at once, they'd destroy everything the fish eggs, the babies, and that would endanger the ecosystem. That's why there is always a park ranger to inform people and teach them about the environment. In five minutes, the second group will arrive, and the first will have to leave. The archipelago hasn't always been a dream destination. For some, the name Fernando de Noronha was even synonymous with hell. This paradise became a devil's island in the 18th century. Most of the forts built to defend the islands were turned into prisons for long-term convicts. These were dark days indeed for the archipelago. And for over two centuries, Fernando de Noronha was a dreaded place for thousands of prisoners. It's a time that Domitio remembers. He's the island's former administrator and the son of a prisoner who became a prison warder. This is where they tried to kill my father, who was a warder. They didn't succeed. You have to understand, all these prisoners were serving heavy sentences, up to 100 years, incommutable sentences. At five in the morning, the prisoners had their coffee. Then they got into groups to go off to work. The work these prisoners did was hard labor, breaking stones. In 1942, the island came under military control and housed a massive American army base. The archipelago only returned to civilian control in the 1980s. The inhabitants of Fernando de Noronha come from all over Brazil, and like Domicio, most of them are descendants of prisoners or military who remained in the archipelago for years. Oh, 
These days, they're employees of the National Marine Park, hoteliers or guides, and they all live from tourism. aparece e eles costumam entrar entre 6 e 15 e o horário dele de saída em média também é 1 e 40 1 e 40 da tarde eles entram normalmente 6 e 15 da manhã the dolphins usually enter the bay from that side they occasionally go the other way but they usually come that way when they enter the bay, they split into different groups. The mating group is easy to spot, because you can see the male courting the female. The male has a white belly. It's the most agitated group. The guard dolphins leap out of the water, so keeping the entire pack alert. Every morning at 6 a.m. at the viewing platform on Dolphin Bay, groups of 30 visitors listen to a guide so as to better understand the riveting spectacle before them. This place is quite unique. After a night hunting at sea, the spinner, or long-snouted dolphins, return here to rest and mate. This bay is one of the places with the most dolphins in the world. It is constantly guarded by rangers. Absolutely no one is allowed to enter it. In the far north of the main island, a house stands facing the sea, continually battered by the wind. This is Ludovic's home. He quit everything one day following a long illness. Married to a Brazilian, he was able to move to the archipelago and has lived here for six years. It's wonderful because we face the minor islands. Norona is an archipelago with many islands, only one's inhabited. We're opposite the minor islands on the island's northern tip. This is where the two seas meet, the Dentro, the inner sea between the mainland and the reef, and the Fora, or outer sea, which is the Atlantic Ocean. They meet here, so the waters are pretty turbulent. In the archipelago, Ludovic's favorite pastime is free diving, which he usually does at the other end of the island, off Caracas Point. At low tide, a rocky slab swept by a heavy swell 
makes getting into the sea somewhat perilous. This underwater landscape was sculpted millions of years ago when volcanic lava formed arches, grottos, and domes. A submarine world where Ludovic can forget as he holds his breath for over two minutes. That's what diving is. Diving means being in total harmony with the sea. It's a sport where you're really completely at one with the sea, the water. We followed a nurse shark, or lamburu as they call it here. We followed it for a few minutes at a depth of 25 meters. It was amazing. This is an island with a population of 2,500. It's remote. There is no island hopping transport. We're really on our own, isolated. And it's true, there's a rebellious spirit here. It's, it's a rebel island. The locals are rebels. They've always blocked large building projects, stopped the big lobbies. Thank God. Uh, you have to take your hat off to them. The locals aren't always easy to get along with, but they have managed to preserve their island. They fought hard. Simba do Padre, the surfing beach on Fernando de Naronia. It's a world famous spot. Every year, this beach hosts one of the most important stages in the World Surfing Championship. It was moved here following a significant number of shark attacks on the mainland. A single road crosses the island from north to south. To get about, there are only tracks accessible by buggies or paths, which lead to other pristine beaches, other dramatic settings for other riveting spectacles, such as Lion Beach, the Turtles Beach. Every night from December to July, the Hawksbill Turtle and the Green Turtle, two endangered species, come here to lay their eggs on the sand. It takes 50 days for the sea turtle hatchlings to emerge from their nests. During this time, the nests are observed daily by the island's biologists. Pablo is a biologist. 
This is his third year in the archipelago. He dives every day to observe the behavior of the young turtles and to evaluate their growth and development. sanctuary reserved for scientists, tourists are only admitted on certain conditions. They must have a guide and wear a life jacket, so as not to disturb the animals in their natural element. For Pablo, studying the turtles is also a unique opportunity to learn from this animal. Its will to survive the centuries in the face of its many predators, such as man and sharks, is an example for life. Turtles can teach us a lot. They humanize people a bit. We're so stressed about time, our schedules, the mad daily rush, especially in the big cities. They are here to show us another dynamic exists. There are other, more important battles and struggles. We all have to fight for life, despite our own problems. This is what turtles teach us. Patience, serenity and perseverance. Cai a chuva e molha a terra Regando o que plantou Nasce o sol, clareia o dia Sermente que germinou E vem nascendo o fruto Alimentando o ser E o vento soprando Mãe natureza, minha mãe é você. Um de um de um de um da. It isn't a continent. It's an island. An island is a closed space. If everyone comes here, we won't be able to walk around the island because it would be too crowded. That's why you need rules. You have to pay. You must only stay a week. A week is plenty of time because it's small. You can visit all the spots, all right? Cara preta, pega essa criança. 